Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and this is going to be the fifth installment in my Law of One series. And today we're talking all about star seeds and wanderers. Now the word star seed is not used in the Law of One material, but I went ahead and put it in the title of this video anyways because star seed is the term that most people use to refer to this concept that Ra calls wanderers. Now the word wanderer is not some colloquial term that all higher beings use, okay? It's just the word from our language that Ra chooses to familiarize us with this concept of higher density souls which choose to incarnate into a lower third density world. So we can use the terms starseed and wanderer interchangeably, but there is a slight difference between the two. The term starseed is typically used to refer to someone who's incarnated from another galaxy or star system that's not native to our own. Hence the name starseed. But a wanderer is not necessarily someone who's from another star system, but it could be someone who has simply graduated from Earth into fourth density, but chooses to reincarnate again rather than go on to a fourth density incarnation. But outside of that, the two terms can be more or less used synonymously. It's really popular these days to claim that you're a starseed. Instagram and YouTube are flooded with people bragging about their extraterrestrial origins. Greetings. My name is Starseed Indigo Ray Child of the Pleiades. I've incarnated here to bring my higher vibrations to you citizens of Earth. Now there's nothing wrong with this of course, but let's be honest, it can be a type of escapism. The reality is that if you feel the need to constantly brag about being a starseed, then you're probably not a starseed. <laughs> a true wanderer or starseed is someone who's a much more advanced soul, which means they're a lot less likely to fall into the trap of wearing starseed as a little ego badge to feel special. They're also going to be a lot less likely to talk about it because they're able to see that being a starseed doesn't make them any more special than anyone else. So again, Nothing wrong if you do this, but it could be a helpful indicator to check in with yourself and see if maybe your ego is using the term starseed as an identity to feel special or superior to others. Oftentimes, people who claim to be starseeds will say things like, I just don't fit in with society here because uh, I'm actually an alien to this world and back in my native home in the Pleiades, our society is much more harmonious than this one and so I just don't really fit in with society here. But Ra explains that anyone who chooses to become a wanderer has to play by the rules, meaning you don't get to keep your memories from Zeta Reticuli 4,000 years ago. You have to fully assume this third density body and completely forget all memory of previous incarnations. As Ra states, the wanderer becomes every bit the third density human as anyone else. But there is a good reason why you might not feel at home in this world. It isn't because of a memory of a previous lifetime, but the fact that your soul's native frequency is much higher than the planetary frequency here, which can make integration into society feel strangely difficult. In session 12, Ra states, Due to the extreme variance between the vibratory distortions of third density and those of the more dense densities, if you will, Wanderers have as a general rule some form of handicap, difficulty, or feeling of alienation which is severe. The most common of these difficulties are alienation, the reaction against the planetary vibration by personality disorders, as you would call them, and body complex ailments indicating difficulty in adjustment to the planetary vibration, such as allergies, as you would call them. Now, Ra also says that not all wanderers will wake up to their pre-incarnate intention of coming here to the third density. In fact, Ra actually says that only 8.5 to 10% of wanderers will fully penetrate the forgetting and remember that they're actually here for a purpose. And again, when I say remember, I don't mean that your mind becomes flooded with memories of previous alien lifetimes. I mean that there is a deep sense of clarity and resonance within you that you are actually here for a purpose. In session 36, Ra states, there is a larger percentile group of those who have a fairly well-defined symptomology indicating to them that they are not of this, shall we say, insanity. This amounts to a bit over 50% of the remainder. Nearly one-third of the remainder are aware that something about them is different, so you see that there are many gradations of awakening to the knowledge of being a wanderer. 
The first important point to know about Wanderers is that the third density is the only density that Wanderers incarnate into. The reason for this is because third density is the only one with the veil of forgetting, as Ra calls it, where the soul frequency is cut off from the database of all its prior incarnations, its intentions in coming here, and any other knowledge outside of this third density world. The Logos has chosen this veil to serve as a powerful catalyst for the choosing, which is the choice between the positive and negative path, and this is the primary purpose of third density. The Creator wants the choice between the light and the dark to be an authentic, organic choice, not one that is influenced by any outside source. Therefore, when any soul incarnates into the third density, wanderer or not, they will not retain any memory prior to this current incarnation. The fourth through seventh density incarnations do not undergo the forgetting, and so incarnating as a wanderer into any density above third would be completely pointless, as it would serve no benefit but would actually slow down the process of polarization. Another interesting note about wanderers is that the vast majority are going to be of sixth density. Less will be of fifth density, and according to Ra, fourth density wanderers are very rare. In fact, since the raw material was channeled in the 1980s, our planet has officially shifted into fourth density, which would technically make any fourth density souls incarnating here no longer wanderers. However, we are still at the very beginning of fourth density on our planet, and so everything still reflects the third density, which makes it a very attractive planet to incarnate into for those seeking to rapidly accelerate their own polarization. The reason that most wanderers are of sixth density is because the sixth density is that of perfect unity and balance between love and light. So an entity in sixth density who has an overabundance of wisdom and lacks some degree of self-love will see incarnating into third density as a very attractive means of correcting this imbalance. Ra states that the sixth density wanderer will typically program a very severe deficit in some area that will require them to overcome a specific struggle that will allow them to learn the self-love or wisdom that they need. In one example, Jim McCarty, who served as the scribe, asked Ra why he has always struggled with being hard on himself when he makes mistakes. He states that it was something he'd always struggled heavily with his whole life. Ra answered by saying that Jim's soul is very high in wisdom but lacking in love, so he chose an incarnation that was programmed to struggle heavily in the category of self-love, as a means to force him to learn how to love himself. So the danger for any wanderer is that they have to undergo the forgetting process. And in doing so, they risk actually missing out on the intention that they came here with, and then becoming karmically involved with others. And when I say karmically involved, what I mean is that the deficits they program for themselves in order to learn certain lessons might actually cause them to commit serious errors towards other people. And if they do that, they're going to then be compelled to reincarnate into another lifetime to fix that error. So in session 12, Ra states, The largest number of wanderers, as you call them, are of sixth density. The desire to serve must be distorted towards a great deal of purity of mind and what you may call foolhardiness or bravery. The challenge slash danger of the wanderer is that it will forget its mission, become karmically involved, and thus be swept into the maelstrom from which it had incarnated to aid in the destruction. This is the nature of what Ra calls spiritual catalyst. The things we struggle with in this life are all for a specific purpose. You could think of our souls as grains of sand and our physical incarnation as an oyster. Through the contrast and friction of human life, the grain of sand becomes refined into a beautiful pearl. This is, in a sense, what wanderers are here to do. Because of this, third density is a very attractive option for sixth density souls seeking to find perfect balance between love and wisdom to polarize into the seventh density. In session 36, Ra states, the wanderer has the potential of greatly accelerating the density whence it came in its progress and evolution. This is due to the intensive life experiences and opportunities of the third density. Thusly, the positively oriented wanderer chooses to hazard the danger of the forgetting in order to be of service to others by radiating love. If the forgetting is penetrated, the amount of catalyst in third density will polarize the wanderer with much greater efficiency than shall be expected in the higher and more harmonious densities. This is also why the third density is remarkably short in comparison to the life cycles of other densities, because the creator does not want this period of suffering to go on for very long. We are essentially here for a brief moment in time, 
to be forged in the fire of spiritual suffering that compels us to choose which path we want to serve, the light or the dark. As a quick side note, the negative path also has wanderers, although they are much more rare. For a negatively oriented entity, undergoing the forgetting process is far too great of a risk to take, as they could easily come in contact with positively oriented beings who would greatly depolarize them if they are not able to remember their intention in coming to third density. Those negative beings who do choose to risk incarnating as a wanderer will do so in order to teach the ways of the service to self path and hopefully accelerate their polarization on the negative path greatly. But this is akin to playing a game of Russian roulette, so very few choose to take this risk. Now, Ra states that the fifth density wanderer will look quite different than the sixth density wanderer. Fifth density being that of light or wisdom is much more prone to choosing an incarnation that will force the learning of wisdom. So these will be people who are seen as old souls or people who just have a wealth of spiritual understanding naturally. They aren't easily triggered by others and they don't go out of their way to be of service like a fourth density soul would. They simply offer service when it is seen as necessary or when it is requested. And as Ra states, they will usually have a strong aversion towards marriage or childbearing, as does the sixth density wanderer. So Ra states that there are three main reasons why a soul might choose to incarnate as a wanderer in the third density. The first reason is to use the third density experience to greatly accelerate their own polarization. The second is to be of service to the planet as a whole by simply bringing a higher vibration that will contribute to raising the planetary frequency. And the third reason is to be of service in a specific way by using their own unique gifts and abilities to teach, heal, or guide other entities. Ra explains that every soul has its own unique gifts that it has honed and practiced over the course of its incarnations, which allow it to play a very specific role. This is why some people have natural psychic abilities, others are natural healers, teachers, or empaths. These giftings are those that each specific soul has been working on for many lifetimes. But Ra does explain that some souls may feel frustrated at the lack of ability that this third density yellow ray body has to channel the powers of consciousness compared to say, a green ray or blue ray body. This is simply part of what wanderers accept when they incarnate into a third density life. In session 75, Ra states, in the case of wanderers which seek to recapitulate the degree of adeptness which each had acquired previous to this life experience, we may note that even after the forgetting process has been penetrated, there is still the yellow ray activated body which does not respond as does the adept which is of a green or blue ray activated body. Thusly, you may see the inevitability of frustrations and confusion due to the inherent difficulties of manipulating the finer forces of consciousness through the chemical apparatus of the yellow ray activated body. So in closing, the Law of One is one of the most powerful spiritual texts ever written because of its unique ability to widen our perspective on things. Anytime that you're feeling depressed or hopeless or angry or afraid, it's always because your perspective is too narrow. What we can gather from Ra's teachings is that no matter what happens to you in this lifetime, no matter how painful or severe it might seem, it is not the end all be all. You've been doing this for thousands of lifetimes and you have thousands more ahead of you still. So there's no reason to take your life so damn seriously. Contrary to what religion has taught us, this life is not your one and only shot. You didn't come here to be perfect, you came here to learn and to expand yourself. So simply do the very best you can with this lifetime that you've chosen and remember that you are eternally loved and that there truly are no mistakes. Being a wanderer or a starseed does not mean that the fate of the world rests in your hands. It simply means that you have come here to learn a unique lesson. There's no one placing a burden on you greater than anyone else has. The only one putting pressure on you is yourself. So in order to solidify this, I'll leave you now with one final quote from Ra. The law of one, though beyond the limitations of name, may be approximated by stating that all things are one. 
that there is no polarity, no right or wrong, no disharmony, but only identity. All is one, and that one is love and light, the infinite creator.